Hello, so we are live and I'm just going to let the Facebook load <laughs> the comments to come in and um, let it just load up because I'm just setting it up before we start. And let the yeah. Facebook okay. All right. Good morning, everybody, and good evening from wherever uh, all my lovely, lovely mothers are going to join in in the comments. I'm going to just set up the comments. Um, okay, just again, don't mind my cold. Whenever I do morning interviews, you know, I've been suffering with cold. But we have a beautiful, beautiful, beautiful mother. Uh, Ami Doshi, you all read what all she does. So Ami, welcome to this beautiful book. And welcome to uh, this interview series that we're doing to introduce these exceptional moms to the world. Um, let's go ahead and like just go ahead and introduce yourself because the mother who lives the story tells a story the best and just, just go ahead and tell us your story till here as Ami's journey and then we'll go further with more questions. So thank you, um, Shikha. I think uh, it is long due to be on this interview and finally uh, with your persuasion that I am here. Um, I think the journey as you rightly said, the journey began um, when I was pregnant, you know, to kind of be there for my child and be there for uh, knowing a lot of things that, okay, how best can I raise my first child, right? So the journey began from there as a um, mother for the first time um, and how could I give the best to it? So a parenting coach as, as a, you know, a transformation that came in that, okay, after she was about uh, my oldest daughter, now she's 14. And um, after that, I think, you know, one year old that she was, I kind of started this whole journey of spreading the knowledge of parenting to a lot of people. And it became that, okay, how, if I can benefit from it, how else, you know, how more other people can benefit from it. So that's where it all began from as a parenting coach. And I think there's no looking back from it. Oh, yes. I mean, there's like, I was just writing your profession, Ami, and it was just like going on and on and on because I know you personally as well. You just keep adding and adding and adding and adding. You just keep studying. Um, so I absolutely you're here because your journey started uh, from being a mom and then wanting to be probably bringing that whole thing to the world. Uh, and I think the first thing you did was uh, being a play therapist. And how was that journey of being a play therapist? And I know that also you started while your daughter was very young. So I think um, the idea was that, you know, in, in the free time, what do I do with my kids, right? So um, that is when I started playing games with them and um, uh, making sure that, you know, the time that they are with me or the quality time that I spend with them has a little bit of value add that I can do. So I started designing some games. I started playing, you know, kind of making my own games there. And that is when uh, this whole profession came in, you know, and that is when that whole thing that, okay, uh, play therapy is like a vast thing that can happen. And that is when I felt that, okay, uh, why not pursue it more to understand people and understand, you know, children through games. And, and that is, I think, because uh, in their formative years, that's the only thing that they do, you know, that they play games and they're more active by, by learning through experiences. And I think that is where it struck that, okay, you know, a lot of life skills could be built by, you know, kids as and when they play different games. So play therapy came in at that point of time for me. And now I think I have about 3000 odd games with me wherein I still give them to kids to play. And uh, I think it has now expanded to more adults and more people across. Yes. And we have Debbie in our, one of our favorites in uh, the, the whole movement that we're doing. Thanks Debbie for being here. And sorry for my cold uh, and cough. And somebody special has also joined in, Swarna, Swarnata Reddy. You know Swarna is our I mean, I am literally emotional that she has joined in uh, in this chat because I so love her. Swarna, so nice to see you. I've been thinking of you, so I have to call you. So thanks for joining in. 
two of my favorite women are right here debbie and swarna, uh, swarna is here and um i'm just so i know that the whole play therapy started in fact i've had sessions where uh we like we've done a game with my father as well like you use play uh for adults as well and what's that all about and how do you how do you figure out more about what's happening and what's the help that's needed when you play games with even adults um not only children so when we play a game you are your original self you know you will not be able to mask your behavior and play therapy is all about to understand how you can you know introspect or reflect on your behavior better so my job as a therapist was only to give some insights from the game that the person plays and the minute um, they can reflect on it i think you know the awareness is there so um, uh, it's more about their own journey that they go through because maybe sometimes they're not realizing what they're doing and every time you play a game that is how you are in your real life you know and that behavior is is very true do you think that it cannot be masked uh, in in play therapy like you can never mask it because uh, even if say you have a trait where i want to achieve you know like say i cheat also okay i mean it's not called cheating but i would say i want to just move faster to achieve my success you know and that is where i would find maybe a little shortcut somewhere yeah right but that is also a trait that a person has that you know any time they want to reach a goal um they would want to achieve some shortcuts for it right and and i think that's completely okay as a personality because uh, that is what probably makes you an individual and that is what uh, you are as an individual so that's that and it's, i i feel it's nothing right or wrong but it's just a way of your living you know so i have a question for you like because you're such a close friend and i can make this a, a good interview uh, for people to watch because a lot of people watch replays as well and these interviews are going to go everywhere in the world in youtube as well but i want to still ask you a question somebody like me i don't actively play games what do you have to say about that like i'm very inquisitive that i do not play games very actively like i lose interest in games very fast i can't sustain a game for very long like if my children are trying i can do like activities with them i can go outdoor i can like run with them be with them listen to them but when it comes to games or board games or anything i'm just like ah uh, after a point i'm just like shaking my head and i'm like either i don't understand it or i don't try to understand it or i So what do you say about that? That's very inquisitive, and this is an open thing. You can say anything. I want to know what what's that all about. Okay, so as I know you, and as um, I think you're more of a very intuitive person, right? Okay, so when it comes to intuition. and when it comes to logic right in board games and all when you have to play a game which is very purely logical um, you know like a chess board or something definitely you will lose your interest because something uh, because that is not your type of personality okay but if i give you a game which will bring in your creativity or which will bring in you know the aspect of what you really enjoy doing you will sit for hours okay so that's something um which is uh, which again tells about how you are as a personality you know and so it's not about that you don't you don't enjoy it it's just that your brain functions differently and i think that's right game so i'm not take the right game so exactly so, the choice of game is something which which we need to work on that's all you, you know, would enjoy you know, games is different i can tell my children that this game is not for me uh, like it actually uh, i can't sustain chess for very long it's just uh, uh, you know or uh, you know you're right if if it doesn't interest me if it doesn't bring anything more uh, i don't get excited about games and um, so it's interesting that i was just putting this whole thing of game theory whatever theory it is not the game theory but this theory of playing into practice and it's interesting to know that because um i mean you're uh you're right about the fact that i don't think so we can we can hide when it comes to a uh, playing right we will become who we are and francis is here i can relate to that shikha uh thanks debbie francis is here she's also a parent how oh, melanie is here a parenting expert as well 
and uh, Frances is a teacher and she's also into the space of parenting. Um, and then from there on, like you're also a handwriting expert. You're also many, many, many things. So let's talk about that. And all this, interestingly, ladies, I'm letting you know, all started when Ami became a mom. Before that, Ami had no intentions of doing any of these things. It's the child that brought so much to Ami and Ami is unstoppable since then. And she's just learning and she's just doing so many things and helping and impacting lives and making them understand very easily. She'll say, okay, let's play a game. And she who don't know Ami is like figuring it out. The whole problem she'll figure out um, Like she played a game with my father and she just figured out. I was amazed that she figured out what was going on in his head uh, and, you know, uh, uh, she was helping him with some things and similarly had writing. And you're also a law of attraction trainer. So let's talk about that and tell people about it because this is all so interesting and I'm so interested in that. So uh, for me, you know, um, the transformation um, that could bring in somebody's life, you know, and the transformation that could happen in somebody's life really charges me up. Uh, you know, and and say when I see a child smiling with a game, it just happened that wow, you know, uh, it's not about that I have done anything, but the child has enjoyed the game, and that could be just another game from from you know a store, right? Um, so slowly, when I started getting deeper into it, what more could lead to transformation? You know, that was my question. What next? And that is when uh, I think handwriting came in that. You know, I had my own challenges and I had my own, um, um, you know, issues that were there as a as a person, as a mom, as a wife, you know, and uh, I, I felt that, I mean, how do I deal with that? And that is when, you know, a therapist came into my life and, you know, she kind of changed a lot of things for me. So I would always owe it up to her that you know uh, she got a lot of insights and she she kind of gave me more stuff that I could really think about and that is when that science kind of intrigued me that okay why not you know if this can help me again how can I take it back to more people and that is when I started learning uh, handwriting and, you know, I kind of became a certified graphologist and also a therapist wherein now you can rectify your behavior through handwriting. So I do a lot of things. I've gone through that with you. Like, of course, I've gone through a handwriting session with you and I'm still so inquisitive about it. That how do you rectify it? How do changing a why like or a G or the way you're writing your G's because I remember I don't know what you told me about something that you're like oh this is not working very well for you and that's why you're writing this like this uh, if you consciously start changing it it will change something in the brain and I was I was like um, wow it doesn't really happen so what's the science behind that so you have your nerve endings um, and you know you, the nerves connect to your brain when the when the nerves connect to your brain there is there are a lot of things that go into your brain and so all that that you are thinking comes down in the form of writing through these nerves right so that is why graphology is called as brain writing now whatever you are thinking uh, is what we analyze so whatever comes down is not about what you write it's about how you write so that there are different strokes there are different ways that you know both of us would write our our you know, uh, alphabets differently. So um, once that happens, now the idea is that you can analyze uh, A in 30 different ways, you know, and you can analyze a B in another 30 different ways. So when you can analyze it, you know that this trait works for you, this trait probably is not working for you. So as a therapist, um, I would give you another way to write a letter, which will again send signals to the brain in such a way that you change your behavior. So we are working on the neurons and the neuro pathways. And once that kind of, you know, makes a rewiring happen, you, you can see a change in the behavior that you are. So, so one brain, you know, like so many ways of reaching it and uh, recognizing it. And we humans will not stop because we've still not cracked it. We've still really not cracked the whole uh, idea of how this thing works. Uh, we are trying, we are trying, but we've not cracked it. But we've been successful in many, many ways, like through your handwriting or 
even like through my visual like visual and photography and music and so many things work in this small little brain and can be altered uh, playing um and and just letting you guys know don't mind my ginger water that's coming i'm making sure i don't cough in this interview because uh, that keeps coming in the middle uh but like this you you said you're a graphologist uh you're a uh, uh that's okay if your children are making sound that's also okay because this is a mother project this mother project everything is allowed my ch- my child children go behind me and he just try to hide behind this thinking they can't be seen and they come in the middle of the interview and they can't like my shorya really thinks he can't be seen from here and he keeps knocking and tapping so all that is allowed um so you know you uh, uh uh the the play therapist part we've talked about you were you had many things the law of attraction trainer is also another thing that like uh, we must tell people about because of course there are a lot of mothers here who have the read the book the secret have seen the documentary um but it like like still they confuse how do you attract what happens how's the how's the law of attraction working so let's talk about because you're a law of attraction trainer as well i think all uh, moms like us right we are the biggest law of attraction uh, people because say you know you have your child who is unwell you keep visualizing the child to be well right and you you kind of really attract that into your life and you would not want to see disharmony in your children or disharmony in the family and we try to bring those uh, thoughts in our that okay how can i change it and how can i really work on that so i think law of attraction for me was that biggest thing that okay i mean i believed in secret at one level and i believe that okay you know things can really go good for you if you really believe in it you know and that is when um, my trainer in bombay was doing a course and i said i want to jump in and i want to learn about it because i feel um, i am not really utilizing my potential somewhere and i'm not you know i'm i'm lazy about it so i somehow i feel that okay if i can just put my thought and somewhere i thought okay i can think about it and attract it why not but law of attraction i think it got much bigger later on that there was so much depth in it that it really matters uh, what kind of thoughts you have what kind of ways that you want to reach out to people and if you are really genuine in your thought things do come to you you know and i believe in that that you know if i want to transform people some way uh, you know things unfold for me that you know i can reach out to more people that way in their journey right so i think that's how law of attraction happen and just now it's a way of life you know I'm yeah so happy with you and i think that brings in a lot of patience as well because when uh, like of course today i was 15 minutes late i was talking to this mum before this it was a very intense call um, which was going on and um, absolutely a brilliant story everybody should tune in tomorrow she's going to be in uh like she's really taken um uh, my heart away with what her story is and she was finishing it the only reason i was sitting like not getting restless because you were on the other side ami you were the guest who were coming and i knew that ami would be sitting there and saying this is how it's meant to be i believe it will live when the time is absolutely right when it went to be like fine i know ami is going to totally understand that there's a reason that this is happening because i always hear you and and i was in bangalore i used to tell you that oh there's going to be traffic ami she like don't worry there will be no there will be no traffic you will be there on time and i'm like no tra- there's going to be this is time this traffic and we like don't worry there will be no traffic will be so i i've seen you applying that again and again and that also brings a lot of patience and of course we are not we are not saying that just because we are trainers and we are graphologists and we are play therapists we are perfect but we have these tools to keep rectifying ourselves keep moving forward to keep you know uh correcting things that can interfere with our daily living or living of our clients or people that you work with um do you apply all this to your daughters as well you have two beautiful daughters um do you tell them like if they're not doing okay do you tell them start writing and i'll see what's happening to you uh, or do you keep that away from them um no they have they also are aware now and they they do rectify it themselves i think so writing has helped them and they they kind of have gone through that and as you rightly said i think the the law of attraction has gotten a lot of positivity right because you know you see a different perspective in in everyone 
and when they say they're restless you're seeing that okay why the person is restless or why you know so that positivity or the intent behind it is much stronger so when people come to me as clients or anything they tell me that you know just talking to you makes us as ease because you've been able to give us another perspective or another way of seeing that okay how you can get better right so i think even with my kids that's the same thing i would i am the uh, when they come that okay you know this has happened probably i i am able to make them see another version of it that you know see something good has still happened out of it right and that is where um, you keep seeing that okay uh, but it's okay i mean things can go wrong but it you know there is a silver lining to it so i i still believe in that that kind of a thing that okay yeah i I've, I've, i've definitely uh, had an opportunity to see with with your daughters as well and even with uh, my son i think his whole uh, being stuck with math i think you came over and you were like trying to figure it out uh, when he was talking and you were talking and uh, i know you had a library which you let go off right now and you got into something called transformative lives is that what the new uh, venture is and what are you doing with that now what's that all about so building transformative lives was all, is all about um, reaching out to more people in one go you know how how we can kind of really bring in a transformation from from childhood till um, you know old age right so say from uh, from the womb state till you know your geriatric what we talk about that you know all all elders also i mean they suffer a lot you know in their old age being maybe alone being lonely so a lot of things that i do with them for games through games you know where they kind of uh, work on themselves as you know with your dad that i was working so something very uh, niche that i could work in the idea was to complete a whole life cycle you know so from womb till till the end till wherever i could go back to so the library is i think a, a big um, what do you say a tool for me to work with more and more people and the, the name came uh, from my husband that you know what uh, initially it was building blocks of life you're just only one life that you are transforming why do you want to do this you know you need to expand so let's make it more transformative lives and i think that's when the whole uh, seen changed for me yeah and I, i also know you so letting our ladies here who are here cynthia hi hello how are you lorette is here um uh as well and these are just some beautiful mothers in the book you'll get to meet they're just so gorgeous um you know because you had a library of books uh of children i also know that you use a lot of storytelling even with adults when you try to explain thing you use a very storytelling method to them and uh, i saw you doing it for my father when he was there and that story is like rotates in my head a lot of times and i say it and how beautifully you explained him something through a story um how do you how do you inter- do you do that on a regular basis do you use stories to explain and why do you think stories work better because our, this book is all about 100 stories of 100 moms through pictures and 300 words yes but essentially through pictures so how does story help in uh, uh helping people to understand and not be defensive that you're talking about them or you're talking about them and you don't get defensive and i know that's the method but how does story work uh, when you tell them and do you do it often do you do use stories often to do that so for me i've felt that you know um, at times when i visit some psychologist and some people there is a lot of jargon in them and it really it has made me feel very low about myself you know that oh my god i don't know this terminology you know and i don't know how uh, what it is and what this person is saying so uh, when a person comes to me i feel that can i talk to them in their language you know can i talk to them and make them feel um, at equals you know that they are not coming here um, to me as a therapist or they are not coming to kind of find some solution they are just coming here to talk to me you know and that is where i felt the storytelling or um, some incidents that you know they could relate to actually works with them and the kind of reflection that they go back with is much stronger because um, i'm not telling them that oh you know i'm a therapist and you know you don't know this you don't know this i think uh, you know uh, i can just explain to them in a much simpler way right 
and that has worked it wonders works, because it works, I think so. it works because uh, something that my dad was dealing with and I knew it in a big essay way like I could write and I could say that yeah you know this is what your problem is and this is what it is as a daughter I could tell him but when you just like mention it to him and like you know he's a very playful kind of a guy you know he plays uh, and he's a very charming human being and he masks his problems with uh, you know all the charm that he has but then you could just figure it out and then you just told him a story and then since then he's been nodding and whenever he goes off all i tell him that do you remember what ami told you that story of the tomato bags is what you uh, uh told him and that those tomatoes are rotted now and like you really need to leave them because it's really not working for you so like stuff like that uh, definitely works uh, and it, it's been two years i still use it for myself and for him and uh, like even those dice that you use to tell him okay let's create a story because uh, I, I remember you rolling some dice and the images came in and you said okay let's create a story what's the story that you're creating and he kept on even I could see it, like even he kept on saying, but I could also see that, wow, he's just saying the same story again and again and everything is about that one thing that's bothering him. And um, uh, it's very fascinating. There's just no end. Uh, and to do it in a light way, as you mentioned, and not do it in a way that it makes a person feel, oh my God, that this big jargon that I don't know what, some, some brain part of mind is not working and not reflecting and all that. That's beautiful, Avi. And that's really beautiful. And... I can go on and on talking to you about it because uh, I think uh, and I know many things are getting added to your to your uh, thing because you'll not stop learning. You will not you just keep <laughs> it. I, if I ever do another interview, there'll be like five more things added to it uh, uh, as what you've done because you genuinely want um, to transform lives in the most easy and a comfortable way rather than pinpointing that this is what you've done wrong and this is what you've done wrong and you should have rectified this and this is this is or here is a medicine and just go ahead and take it and that's that's the love that you bring to your clients and that's the beautiful part um so moving on from there ami as a mother ami as a mother is a dancer ami as a mother does many many things and her daughter is a beautiful photographer she's done under some of my workshops and i just look at her and i'm like wow how does she like She's so excited about pictures. And to tell everybody, Ami's grandparents, uh, grandfather was a photographer, was one of like known fashion photographers. So Ami's grandfather was a photographer, fashion photographer in India. So what's this whole relationship with photography? Because from there, you're also going to be invited to the self-portrait, uh, you know, which in spite of, let me also mention this to everybody. I've asked musicians who are very close to the pulse. I've asked, uh, a scientist yesterday who does defense missiles and uh, she creates uh, she uh, missiles and drones for the defense and even them they said all that is okay but when it comes to self-portrait I'm not okay and I know even Abhi struggles with when it comes to self-portrait so I'm catching everybody who is really transforming and who are brilliant at what they're doing but this is here it is what is it about this camera that just activists and knowingly like somebody who knows everything uh including me is like always wondering oh my god we'll go we'll delete we'll say no no, no this, is not, this is not okay this is not fine we are unable to get it or when we do we are like ecstatic we bring so much ecstasy what's that about let's catch you on that now and talk about that because you're such a close friend i can catch you on that directly <laughs> So, <laughs> the I think uh, apart from self-portraits also when you have clicked my portraits it's been disastrous right so <laughs> come on I would say I know I mean how many times it's like Achy, Ami, something more something more so I think that's the only thing no, that you know yeah no I just think it's still look gorgeous it's just that like, it throws you uh, in front of the camera uh, is what my question is. A yeah. musician who's attached, like uh, Saskia also mentioned that no, self-portrait, that doesn't go well. Like, they are the highest level of connection with sitar and cello and everything, my God. And a defense analyst who's making missiles should not be even worried about how does the picture come, but she is. And here is Ami who's also freezes in front of the camera. Why? And Shikha Khanna does as well. Believe me, I do as well. In spite of heading movement, I do as well. 
I don't like I'm trying to catch this whole thing through this project which is my second part apart from the mother pulse <clears throat> what is this like what is this I think it's all about um, self acceptance is what I see you know how do i accept myself because uh, conditioning uh, from what you know you are like you can always do better right in childhood we've always seen our parents telling that okay itna aaya matlab you know so, so just this much you can do a little more you know but good you did this and but still you can reach a little higher so i think that's the whole conditioning that we go through i mean i have gone through i would say for myself and something where that conditioning is stopping to really accept the self the way you are and i think the images or the photographs are are like a very very stark uh, uh, you know uh, like a hard fact come in front of you that okay uh, yeah my eyes don't look good or this doesn't look good so i think that's where um, the self portrait part comes in that okay now there is there is like an external need for a validation i would say that okay you know what the shikha said okay my photo is good so now i'm good you know but can i say to myself i think that's where the journey is still i mean i think i have a long way to go there that i can tell myself that i look good Tell me one picture that you totally love in the shoot about yourself. Which is that picture that you totally love? There's this one gorgeous picture that I did of yours, and you totally love it. And that's been my success. I mean, ah, uh, in twenty years, people come and tell me not like not outsiders. They themselves say that they look beautiful. And yeah, one gorgeous yeah. picture that you use very often, <laughs> and uh, that's the one in which you're laughing with your red hair. Yeah. Eyes. you know that right the book the behind the book and i think that picture i use it very often yes. the red color and the smiling uh, face that is there near the window i think you that's just, just laughing in that and that's a full laughter and that's what emerges you know that and and you know just to tell you as a photographer i realize that that when we find ourselves laughing without any and you know like our shoulders are not tight our jaws are not tight we are not posing we are not doing anything and when you're caught like that by a photographer you just totally love the photographer i know you started loving me even more uh, after that ami uh, but it's it's that it's that because we see we want to be that and then it's frozen in that one frame forever and that is reused again and again and again because it reminds us of what we want to be or what we yes. don't see very often in ourselves and then we just keep looking at it i'm like internally we want to be that internally we want to be that and that's why that laughing picture uh, in spite of the second shoot where you uh, like still thought oh, i have put on weight and i have put on this and i'm like ami you're fine we got some great pictures but you still use that the first picture the maximum and yeah. um, uh, we did get some nice ones in the second one uh, as well but that picture i know for me as well it was an achievement with you because you were Absolutely. I was just myself. Yeah. Everything yeah. down, all defenses down, and you were yeah. uh, somebody that uh, was not clingy. And that's the interesting part of this project, Ami. And you know, we are a therapist, and you must uh, bring this even more further with studies. And I'm going to study even more. That, I mean, when did this happen to our us human beings? And when did this happen? That when we see ourselves, we don't like ourselves. And you know, in Japan. um there is a the scientists they were making a robot and they ro- the robot um, uh was successful and they said that this robot can understand emotions and if you're crying it'll come and soothe you and then the last statement of that uh, that paper was like that when they were announcing about the robot was the day it starts criticizing its own reflection is the day it will become human is is what the last statement of the scientists were because the minute the human will look at themselves they will criticize something about themselves and that's what this project is bringing us forward and uh you know uh and there's your daughter who loves photography who's trying to you know see the world through the world of pictures so this is brilliant and i want this conversation to keep happening because i am not successful in finding why it happens in spite of the knowledge but the, i have worked uplifting mother saying wow you're gorgeous why do you talk like that and then i have this really horrible sleepless night with my son and somebody takes a picture in the morning and i'm like now because of this project i'm like fine go ahead and post it <laughs> i'm hating it from inside i'm like i'm totally like the way i'm looking i don't like my puffy eyes i don't like this 
tired face but it's i think more than the picture it's we not liking ourselves we yeah. not liking what we are seeing and we know that some work needs to be done and we can see it clearly we don't want to acknowledge it and then we keep brushing it off yeah. um uh, so like what is what are the projects that you are doing at the moment i mean well, what are the kind of projects that you are doing you worked with corporates you are working with um and how did you balance it all out with your daughters during covid because i know your husband was stuck in mumbai with the lockdown you and your two daughters were together and there was online class so your daughters are amazing but and i love what like how organized your daughters are as well i just love how they take charge of their life and beautiful work done with them so i think it was it was simple i would say i mean uh, lockdown somewhere um, the need for uh, transforming and the need for acknowledging the gap between your real self and you know what you portray was very high yeah. and i think that is where uh, the work began in terms of a lot of people that you know they started approaching that you know we need to change this aspect the the anxiety and the fear that had caught them Yeah. so now i feel um uh, yes uh, a lot of different kind of work that i do i mean uh, it's it's yes with kids uh, with adults with corporates the indian air force uh, i see your children who are push, pushing things at home don't that's okay <laughs> they're they're darling don't do it's it it's everywhere yeah they're, they're the school starting so a lot of running around in the house is happening that's okay, that's yeah. okay. <laughs> um so i think yeah uh, a lot of varied kind of people i mean now my work is also with a lot of couples so i'm getting a lot of couples that i'm working with to kind of really balance the relationship that they want right. so that is something which is exciting me now um that you know like as a couple if they can transform a lot of people around them will transform so did so. you find more people in covid uh, needing your services um, yeah. because covid brought this like another kind yes. of uh, and did you use play therapy did you use uh uh right hand writing or did you do everything with them so i i work a lot for holistic so not just handwriting or not just uh, play therapy but a lot on their food uh, exercise mindset you know affirmations um so a lot of things which will help them to kind of come out with it so not just one therapy but a more of an holistic way of doing things makes you know? sense absolutely makes sense and i know that when i'll keep this thing you would have to tell me why am i getting cold there would be a reason why the cold and the cough is coming again and again for a month so i will get that that from you as a gift i'm sure because uh, you know everything has a reason i it, it's just like what happens in our brain and how our body reacts and what's happening around us it's all for a reason it's just not as simple as hey you're not taking care of yourself it's just yeah. not sometimes as simple as that it is even like photography it's for photography you sometimes like your picture you don't like your picture you want to pose it's all uh, because it's just not you're not taking care of yourself or you don't like something so uh, so if we just move forward and i know the school is starting so we must move forward otherwise these noises will keep coming as a as a <laughs> as a thing for you because even my son's school has started and uh like they'll they'll make sure that they know that please go off your calls and uh, yes. so let's let's move on to knowing what is ami's dream and because this book is called 100 self portrait 100 dreams what's ami's dream i think the dream um i've been mentioning it all over to transform 1 million lives Yeah. and <laughs> and reach as many people as i can through different channels through different ways to make them live a better life that's all you know to give them a happier life and if i could be a catalyst there you know maybe a very tiny part of it uh, that i could be in their life i think uh, i've done my bit you know somewhere oh, yes that's a that's a big dream that's not a small dream and my dream is to make these 100 dreams possible so that's a big dream because if each of you are going to have 1 million lives 1 million children 1 million dreams 1 million dreams if i make sure that only these 100 dreams come true which is my focus now that these 100 mom's dreams come true um i think i've done my bit of bringing them all together and creating this vessel where all the mothers can meet each other and transform and at least start the process 
uh, of you know mingling and making a big impact and it's not going to be a, i'm telling you this book is 100 shades of mothers and 100 moms it's not going to make a small impact and when mothers go up yeah mind it it's not, mothers i actually it's just not women getting out it's mothers rising to fix the mother pulse getting strong then nothing can stop them from achieving what they yeah. have to yeah so, i think the biggest achievement for me that my daughter wants to pursue psychology and you know go on that path i think somewhere you know you've touched some lives there so the people are here and she's saying your dream will come true it's taking shape and i must again and again thank <laughs> and, and i must thank all the pillars as well here melanie is here all my pillars are here actually melanie is here francis is here kitra is here debbie is here who is missing kavita is missing so all of them have uh, extended this support this love to this place like i mean giving their own time so that these hundred moms can shine giving their own time so that they can bring this this book together with me it's it's an unbelievable blessing you know it's an unbelievable blessing and my editing team again working because they want to support this movement and they're like Shekha, we've got it. Like, I am not even interfering with my editing team because I trust them so much. Uh, Elizabeth and Subitra, they're taking, like, it's difficult to write that one story for so many mothers. They sit down and they write and they tear and they sit down and they write and they tear. They are bringing these hundred stories together and that's a commendable thing that they're doing. So I really love my pillars and my editing team who, without whom I don't think so this project could go ahead. They are totally supporting everybody. So thank you so much for doing that. And we shall go off, start our days as moms. And uh, our kids also go to the similar the same school, though now I'm in Pune, but we are in the same school. So I know the school has started and we shall um, start our day. Thank you, Ami, for being so amazing. And thank you so much for, you know, learning all the time and trying to bring. And I know we still don't reach that perfect thing that we've learned so much. There's so much to learn. There's so much to understand. But welcome to the book. and. Uh, I'm just going to add you and hand you over to the pillar and you'll be very happy to know your pillar is Keetala because Keetala is here and who else could be your pillar? Except I know, I know. Keetala has been a strong pillar for a lot of us, I yes. think. So, yes, yes. Uh, I think it's it's brought a lot of people together. So, I think amazing and thank you. I think thank you everyone for listening. Thank you, Shikha, for doing this. Um, only you can bring out, you know, those those minute stories that you know about me, and I think only you can do it. So, yeah. thank you to yeah. you. <laughs> and I just have a knack of loving people in a way that I can see, uh, like, and embrace them. So that's been my blessing, and that's the blessing that's bringing this book together. I mean, um, to have friends like you who, uh, okay, I have to tell this. Like, Ami has been a chauffeur during my pregnancy surprise uh, <laughs> as well, you know, and uh, she, I, I was all, uh, you know, uh, there was a surprise for me and Swarna is here as well, who beautifully did that surprise that I was expecting for my baby shower. And then Ami is waiting and saying, my driver is waiting for you and you're not coming down. And I'm like, yeah, I'm coming down. And I thought there was a driver and I was like all walking with my <laughs> big belly and I'm like, going slowly. And suddenly I see Swarna, like uh, Ami all dressed up saluting me and saying I'm your chauffeur today and that was such a beautiful moment with Ami for me because the kind of love and I'm like what are you driving me to this place and what's happening and they're like nothing I just came to pick you up and I didn't know there was a surprise so so much love that has been showered by all of you as well so thank you so much um, and I know people are safe in your hand Ami and uh, we'll of course in different cities but we'll meet very very soon again and I'll have hundred more questions, the G and the Y and the <laughs> and the but I'll not stop on that. So uh, you wore a sari and had a baby shower the South Indian way. Yes, they uh, keep it up, they all I wore I was in my normal t-shirt, like a normal clothes. They all made sure that they made me wear a sari and swanda and all that. So all that happened, I didn't even know. So they all chained me. I think Kitana, you couldn't make it there, but yeah. So that's the kind of love I've found uh, in my lore and I'm missing it. And, but all of you are coming in slowly, slowly in this book and hugging this book as well. So it's been a pleasure knowing you. Thank you so much. And I shall go off live and see you guys soon. Thank you. Thank you, don't you. Go, you don't go. I'm just going off live. <laughs>